Has political dogma crept into every single aspect of culture? Is it impossible to have a normal conversation without feeling like you're being encroached upon, judged, critiqued, held up to all sorts of standards for reasons that may not be entirely clear to you? In my brilliant conversation with the great comic genius Ricky Gervais, we, from our differing perspectives, discuss cultural dogma. We discuss religion. Obviously, Ricky's famously an atheist, although he describes himself as spiritual, and I'm famously spiritual, but basically act like an atheist. So it's a wonderful conversation. In this bit in particular, the two of us are focused on the insidious creep of dogma into every aspect of cultural life. Let me know what you think. Give us a comment, give us a like, pass it around, let us know. Of course, it comes from my uh, podcast, Under the Skin, which is available on Lumery. You can get it from Apple. Have a look at the conversation. I reckon a lot of um, the problems that we're experiencing in the world, like right across the scope of our conversation so far, whether it's people craving fame, adulation, celebrity approval, or people being uh, uh, cruel to animals, I I reckon much of it can be derived from a sense of being separate from nature, whether that's inner nature or outer nature, like that people see themselves as isolated, alienated individuals that they're making their own luck in the world and live sort of in a, uh, a world uh, extracted from meaning or de- devoid of meaning. And this is where um, I suppose I'm interested in uh, the way that you, I, I know because I've listened to your stuff, like that your atheism began when you sort of saw your mum like go, don't say that to your brother when you was like a kid um, about like, you know, as if like, and that Jesus was a sort of a kind of baby, an additional babysitter and an omnipresent sort of, uh, you know, <laughs> nanny of the estate. But, exactly. Like, but like, yeah. but but like, cause like I spend a, cause see I spend a lot of time. I suppose uh, I'm solipsistic, narcissistic person. You know, have been through the mill with addiction, with fame and sex and drugs and money and all that kind of stuff. And it's placed me in a, a point where I've had to open myself up to different ideas. I imagine if you and I talked about institutional or orthodox religion and the way that it is structured and the way that power is deployed, prejudice enacted, violence yeah. underwritten, I reckon we'd probably agree. But one of the things that I feel is that that my own love of animals and also my cat did die uh, last week sadly he was also 16 yeah, because no, jenny told yeah. me um and it like i was so affected by it i was more i was surprised by the amount of grief and sadness that i yeah. felt like it took me apart i'd let it hit me full on we buried yeah. him in the garden i dug a hole i got in, into it there was only one self-indulgent bit everything was sincere except for one moment ricky i did smear soil on my face as a sort of expression of deep grief Whatever gets you through. That's what I needed to do. That's that's just no, me expressing no, no, myself. Well, I'm done. And and I think well, the way you're going is that um uh, I seem a spiritual person, but not literally, and that's totally true. That uh, I, I, I'm in as much awe at seeing a tree or a mountain or a bird or a river as anyone who thinks God made it. I I, I am in I. I see the beauty of nature, and I think most. And I, I don't. I don't know this, but you're right. There's a huge difference between spirituality. There's something to the south that gets you through. That you that you want to. You want to know the reason. You want to connect. All those things. I feel all those things with, without the belief in a god or gods. Religion's something else. Religion. Religion basically says you. You want to get into heaven. I know. I know him. You just got to do this shit for me, mm. and we're cool. You know. We, we know that, that everything that's ever started was 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 written by usually a man with an agenda. You know, it's like it's no coincidence. All those rules in the Old Testament sort of favour certain men. In the certain, there's no, it's not a coincidence. You know, and and the same with you know, it, it's a, it, it's no coincidence that if you're born in America, you're probably Christian, if you're born in India, probably a Hindu, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We know that, but if we're talking about spirituality, um, uh, I'm all for it. It's never bothered me. It's never someone believing God has never bothered me. It's what do you do with it? If you start saying to me, I, I, I know um, I love this prophet or that prophet, and I love God. I go good fine yeah and i do this and i believe it. great yeah put it and i think we should throw homosexuals off buildings well no now we've got now we've got a talk now we've got a talk right just you know um 
So it's when there's suddenly an agenda that, that coincidentally favours the person, you know. It's when people have exactly, luckily, God agrees with them. Yeah. <laughs> and I there, there. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I've actually, and, um, and I think it was started with good intentions. Um, in the invention of lying, when my character invents religion, he does it because he can't stand his mum's fear of death. And... And I remember when my mum was dying, if she asked me, I was thinking, I was going to lie. I was like, yeah, there probably is. Because if that, you know, I, I, I probably would have. So um, uh, I think people, there's so many myths about atheism. We can go into the, the definitions and all that. But I think it's worse. People think that atheists run into churches and ruin people's days. You know, <laughs> it's all bollocks. <laughs> Nothing's better than the truth. I, um, people ask me, say, have you ever been in a church? I go, yeah, yeah, it's, it's lovely buildings. I love them. What, what do you mean? You know, it, it's this, it, I, don't, I don't know where it comes from. And also, technically, atheism doesn't even mean uh, you you don't believe in God. It means that, it's, sorry, it, you believe there's no God. It means that you just haven't found God yet. You, you know, there's no evidence. And that that is true. It's, you know... Core. And I've explained this many times that technically I'm an agnostic atheist because one deals with knowledge and one deals um, with belief. So no one knows. If we agree that, that no one knows, we're all atheists. So now what do you think? And believers say, I think there is a God. And atheists think, I don't think there is a God because I haven't got any evidence yet. So that is all is all I'm saying. Um as you say, religion is something else to belief and spirituality. And, um, you know, uh, 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 and if people even say to me, um, if someone proved there was a God, would you believe? I go, well, of course I would. Well, well, it wouldn't even be belief, it would be knowledge. You know, it would also be the greatest discovery ever. Forget, let's cancel the Nobel site from now on. He's discovered God. <laughs> That's, it's done. And I think if, if the, you know, um, and that would change everything, I think. Uh, but until we know, I, I just don't. I, I don't want to li- live my life um, uh, by a belief in something that I have no evidence in. That's all. That's that's all I'm saying. And I, and I sometimes say to people that you know, um, uh, a, a, a good Christian or a good Muslim or a good Jew or whatever is someone who does all the good bits in that holy book and ignores the bad bits. And I say, if you already know right from wrong, you don't need the book. And, and, and you know, you have to cherry pick. Um, and uh, we know that the bad believers are the ones that do the bad bits too, <laughs> you know? Um, so for me, it's, it's, uh, it is personal. I just happen not to believe in God. I, I used to, but now I've thought about it and I, I feel like I don't, need a god um but the, the the thing that i really object to is people assuming that you can't be a good person if you don't believe in a god which which is proved over and over again and i've tweeted things uh, like um uh there are good atheists and bad atheists there are good christians and bad christians and a god has never changed that and all i'm saying is I get it. It doesn't, this is not me going, it, it, it works both ways. You shouldn't judge people by their beliefs. You should judge them mm. by their actual behaviour. You know, mm. right and wrong. You know, some people believe the right thing, but don't do the right thing. And vice versa. And I, I just think, I feel I don't need it. I just don't need a structured guidebook outside at, you know my, my own morality and morality is relative and not absolute and you, you'd have to keep dogma is the problem I think dogma is the real problem and it's not just in religion anymore it's creeping into everything it's creeping into politics and it's creeping you know identity politics it's creeping into um, so, just social um, structures and opinions it's it's you know if, if anyone says to me this is what shouldn't be questioned fuck that no let's um no no let's question it let's, <laughs> that's the red rag to a ball you know what don't quit i've always been like that i've always been like teachers someone said that I, i'll always even a board game i think what are the rules can i 
can I get out of my wind within the rules? <laughs> yeah. I've gone on sort of like the opposite journey in that I feel like I started off atheistic just the same way that I would reject any attempt to impose regulation or control on me for the purposes of domination. And but like as I've you know gone through my own stuff with you know addiction and mental health or whatever it is, and and like I know that you're very um like you know that for example afterlife is about legitimate grief as opposed to some kind of abstract idea of mental illness brought about by a hormonal or neurological balance but myself my own sense of despair uh, particularly looking at it from a perspective of uh, mental health issues and addiction is that there is an unaddressed yearning for a kind of oneness togetherness and uh, and like you know to, to, to your point earlier about brent in indeed for love and when like you talk about that sense of awe of uh, like the appreciation of a, an animal the love of an animal and the sort of regard and gratitude for having an animal love you and care for you or the beauty of nature or the deep deep beauty of the cosmos what i feel like and my own uh, appreciation understanding stroke belief in god is is that there is a kind of in the love of it in the awareness of rightness itself there is an indication that there is such a thing as rightness not that there any one particular group or ideology has unique but a particular and special access to it and and i really firmly deeply believe that spirituality is for me not for me to tell other people boy i don't reckon you should be gay or i don't reckon you should be allowed to do it like i feel like it's i do my in the bible in the bible it says you should pray secretly oh wow so yeah yeah like there Um, is something sort of deeply private about it but i also think ricky that there is a social consequence to um i don't necessarily want to say atheism because i completely agree with your point that there's good and bad you know in like beyond those kind of limited taxonomies but like i do feel like when people think there's no purpose or meaning that and that needn't necessarily be just because of a belief in God, that it creates cultures that are oddly materialistic, nihilistic. And I feel like in the last 20 years, we're seeing more and more worship of self, worship of individual. Well, of course, there's a new narcissism, of course. And uh, and, and um, I, I don't know why I think social media is, is, is partly to blame. I think people being rewarded for bad behaviour is partly to blame, you know, magazines or TV or whatever. You know, I did a speech in the Big Brother house as Andy Millman in Extras. And uh, again, that was, at the, that was at the beginning of it and, and now it's got worse. But a um, couple of points. I, I do think there's a, a, a people uh, crave a oneness. Um, even if we don't have an understanding about why we're here, because again, that's very human. We're inquisitive. We want to know why. We want the answer why. And some people don't accept. We don't know yet, but we're on the way. They don't. They got no. Well, they, um, there's no. You know, the god of the gaps. We 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 understand that. Well, if I if you don't know, explain it. God did it. Okay, well, it doesn't really solve anything. Even down to the, uh, I put a joke in afterlife where cats bothering me, and she says, uh, "How did it all come from? Someone from nothing." And uh, I go, "Well, uh, uh, where did it all come from then?" She goes, "God made it." I go, "Okay, where did God come from?" She went, "He's always been around." I go, "Simple as that, isn't it?" So. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't answer the question, but I get it. And I think, I think, um, apart from people wanting there to be some sort of um, divine justice, because you know, that would be great. Good people would be rewarded and bad people would be punished. Brilliant. OK, it, does, it, it doesn't work like that. You know, you only have to look at, um, uh, you know, children in Africa being born with cancer. and that. You know, we, we know that's not... We know mysterious ways isn't an explanation, okay? Um, uh, that, that, to me, is someone who doesn't know the answer and says mysterious ways. But apart from that, you're right. We're seeking the answer. Why are we here? Um, I think we think that, hold on, well, it's too good. It's too good to be chance. It's, everything's perfect. Well, it seems that way. You know, it's like Douglas Adams' puddle. You know, when it imagines this, I fit this whole one perfectly. Um, uh, but I think you're right. We we are scared and alone, and we the, the the idea of death is is horrible. What you'll never exist again. What was the point? Um, and again, I, I talk about this in uh, in Afterlife One, where I, I, I say, um, um, Kath's saying that uh, if you if, if think it's, you know, um, there's no heaven, why didn't you kill yourself? 
And I say, so if you're watching a really good film, but you know it's going to end, you might as well just stop it. She went, no, because I can't watch it again. And I say, I think that's the amazing thing about life. You can't watch it again. You know, one day you'll hug, uh, you know, your, your mum for the last time. You'll smell your last flower. You'll eat your last meal. You won't know it's your last, but it will be your last. And so you've got to make the most of everything. And it is a terrifying prospect. It is kind of sad that you will never exist again, I, I think. But it doesn't mean it's not true. You know, the bottom line is, I can't believe something I don't believe. And so how do I find meaning? Well, we are here. We are here. The chances of us being us, you being you and me being me, existing now, that sperm hitting that egg is 400 trillion to one. You know, we're not special, but we are lucky. We do exist. It's incredible. And I think of it, it's like a holiday. We don't exist for 13 and a half billion years. Then we, we, we explode into this mass, this electronic blob of thought, introspection, love, hate, fear, beauty, horror for 80, 90, 100 years if we're lucky. Then we die and we never exist again. We return, our atoms return, and it carries on. Right? And that's not scary because I think people are scared of death because they don't know what's beyond. And someone said to me, well, what, do you, what do you think it feels like when you die? And I say, like the 13 and a half billion years before I was born. And that was all right. Hmm. So, but... We, but the big thing is injecting meaning. I think you're totally right. I think you're totally right. When you start thinking about it, it why are we here? Well, um, I mean, it, 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 not even the how, but why. Well, to live your life to the fullest and not and not hurt anyone. To leave the world in a better place than it was when you came into it. To to experience everything, all the reasons, all the obvious reasons. You know, love, wine, dogs, learning, um, all these great things that you can do every minute of every day that you're alive. And then you then you check out. You go, I'm done, thanks. And it's and it's done and it's beautiful. It's fucking beautiful. If you are enjoying that conversation, please go over to Luminary where there's loads of other conversations like that. I've got Bill Burr on there, fantastic chat with him. You can get Luminary from Apple. Comment below, tell us who else you'd like to see on Under the Skin. And if you enjoyed that video, have a look at this one where it's a similar kind of chat around similar subjects. And if you want to get deeper into spirituality and meditation, have a look at my side channel, Awakening. Subscribe to that too. And please sign up to my mailing list at russellbrand.com so I can stay in direct conversation with you.